It's time for the Game of the Week on Richmond's very own WBON-TV Channel 9, the leader in local sports television. Support these great local sponsors who support our community. Now, here's your announcers for the game. Hello and welcome to Madison Central High School for fast pitch softball. It's probably the best kind of softball, right, John? It's the only kind that I know of, brother. We're on WBON TV uh, here presented by Bishop Smallinger and Repair. I'm Jamie Boggs with John Bailey. Have you never played slow pitch softball, church league softball? I really haven't. Wow. I really haven't. There you go. Should be a fun night. Madison Central is hosting the Madison Southern Eagles here in their first meeting of the season. It will be the first district matchup for both teams on the year. Madison Southern comes into the season with a record of 3-2, and two, having dropped their last two games, lost 8-5 to five to Pulaski County earlier this week, and dropped one to Frederick Douglass last night, 9 or 11 to 9. Madison Central comes into the game undefeated 6 and 0. The only close game they had really was last night at Franklin County. They won 11 to 8. All the other games have been margins of at least 5 runs. Should be a good matchup between these two teams. These teams battled last at the district championship game a year ago right here at Madison Central. Another fantastic game that uh, went into extra innings. You always love to see close games. I feel like, it, John, of all the sports we call, uh, I don't know. If, if a game turns into a blowout, it's much less exciting to call. It's much less exciting to watch. You love watching a, a close game, both teams being competitive and giving it their all. I would imagine both teams are going to be locked in the night. This is a, always a big deal when you're facing the opponent that's just right down the road. We have two teams in Madison County going to be battling it out tonight, and I think they're going to be locked in. I hope it's a close game, and it's going to be fun to watch. Absolutely. Like I said, last meeting between these two teams was last year in the district championship game where Madison Central won 4-3 to three in eight innings earlier in that same season. Uh, they played two more times. Madison Central won those 18 to three and then eight to five. So we expect another barn burner here tonight. And we are here live on the pregame show brought to you by Citizens Guarantee Bank. With Citizens Guarantee Bank, your accounts are as close as your phone. Bank anywhere, 24-7. Check your balance, deposit checks whenever you want. Transfer funds and more with the MyCGB app. Visit MyCGB.com to learn more. John, softball is, a, is, is its own unique kind of animal. It's got uh, some, some rules that baseball doesn't, some common practices that baseball doesn't. It's a much faster game in that the bases are closer together. It's a, a lot more bang-bang plays and uh, looking forward to seeing a lot, of, a lot of fun here as we're seeing somebody parked out in center field in the back of their truck, maybe uh, – Maybe he'll get a souvenir here tonight, John. Well, you know, I was looking at home runs. Both teams have a few players that have hit at least one. Some of them have had hit two. But I tell you what, when I was in high school, we used to do the same thing. Park our trucks in the outfield, put the tailgate down, drink some Coca-Cola, and have a good night. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Coca-Cola, not yeah, a sponsor. I, I, I don't know if I'm – that could be. If they want to – they just want to hit us up, that'd be great. Let us know over at uh, Michael at – WCYOFM.com. Yeah, we're here. I think you might have said it already, but we're in the broadcast booth brought to you by Gateway Cycles. First time we've ever called a game outdoors. So this is exciting. We're, we're sitting right on the third baseline, right behind the visiting dugout. It's a beautiful night for baseball. It's been cold all week, but here almost 60 degrees and, and uh, no rain. It has been, and, and both of these schools have been very active last week, or all week, really, in, in baseball and softball, like I said, both these softball teams had a game last night. Madison Southern was at home, Madison Central away. Madison Central's baseball team is playing off to our right, set to host Eastern High School here in a few minutes. I think Southern's baseball team is off. But like I said, these, uh, these teams coming into their first district matchup, both teams wanting to get a great start. Looking at Wayne Leonhardt there 
outside the fence, getting his uh, getting his game face on as well. We're going to take a two-minute break and come back with starting lineups and the first pitch here on WBON TV. I'm Michelle, and I'm Jennifer, and in the spring of 1992, Bishop Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Esco County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cupcadet, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estill Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see ya. Whether you're looking for dependability in the game or on the road, Madison County is where you'll find it. Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond has the trucks you can depend on and a winning tradition just like our great local sports teams. Come see us at Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond or check us out at jackburford.com to see our lineup of dependable trucks and become part of the winning tradition. Hi, I'm Haley, one of the owners and managers at Just Love Coffee in Berea. Just Love Coffee is a franchise that was set up as a vision of love to help children get adopted. Just Love Coffee is a full-service restaurant that features artisan coffee creations plus an all-day food menu that includes golden waffles, delicious sandwiches, and filling craveable wraps. Just Love Coffee, a half mile off exit 76 in Berea in our newly renovated location at 636 Chestnut Street. And at the half, EKU leads state 21-7. I love the way these look. Thanks. Yeah, go Colonels. Is it here? Hey coach, it's right here, but shouldn't you be at the game? Carry your favorite team with you everywhere you go with a new EKU branded debit card from CG Bank. No matter what season it is, always show your Colonel pride. Has anyone seen coach? Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best fajitas in town. Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. If it won't go down. Call Mr. Rooter, the best in town. What do I do now? Call Mr. Rooter, the best plumber in town. Mr. Rooter is Central Kentucky's affordable and reliable plumber. Right now, get any drain in your home clean for only $89. Call 859-253-CLOG. That's 859-253-CLOG. So if you've got a problem that won't go down, call Mr. Rooter. He's the best plumber in town. He'll clean any drain in your home for only $89. Now I know who to call. Call Mr. Rooter. Bye-bye, poopy. You've heard the name Chenault Vineyards, but what do you know about it? Chenault Vineyards is a place for the community to enjoy. Central Kentucky's premier event and wedding destination. With five event venues, full-service catering, over 13 varieties of wine, live music entertainment, seasonal food options, weekly themed Wednesday night out and girls night out, trivia, murder mystery date nights, and free yoga on the point with beautiful views. Everyone can find something to do at Chenault Vineyards. Want to know more? Follow them on Facebook and Instagram or plan your night out at Chenault vineyards.com it's that time of year when we are day and night driving with our kids all over your car never stops at amco transmissions we make sure to keep you rolling we have the latest technology certified technicians and longest warranty to keep your vehicles running strong we specialize in all foreign and domestic transmissions drive train or just general maintenance did you know at amco the average customer saves eighteen hundred dollars in comparison to the dealer and amco has a longer warranty come see us at amco transmission for the best service and the cheapest price is around double a mco it's the common thread that ties us together making life better for everyone at cvnb that means better banking better accounts and lending better experiences better schools and better communities better it's what ties us together cvnb bank better
granite, marble, and quartz for any surface. Make a lifetime commitment you won't regret. We are so excited to announce that CC Diesel will be moving to a new location. We're moving to 2269 Enterprise Drive, right off of 25 on Duncan and Lane. With a bigger location, we will be able to better serve our customers and provide service to a larger variety of equipment as well. Stay tuned for the date of our grand opening, and thank you for choosing CT Diesel for all of your diesel performance needs. Need a physical for school or work? Need it right away? No problem! Berea Urgent Care has two convenient locations along with late hours to meet your needs. They're affordable too. Physicals at Berea Urgent Care only $20. DOT and CDL physicals are only $65. Berea Urgent Care number one by Walmart is open every day 9 to 9. Berea Urgent Care number two by Berea Drug open Monday through Friday 10 to 6. No appointment necessary. Berea Urgent Care, here when you need us. Just about time for some softball here in Madison Central. Coverage on WBON TV, presented by Bishop Small Engine Repair of Richmond, as we wrap up the Chris Stapleton version of the national anthem. I'm Jamie Boggs here with John Bailey. John, uh, he doesn't do a lot of stuff wrong. No, man, this is probably one of the best renditions of the national anthem to get us ready for some softball action here in Madison County. Kentucky native Chris Stapleton. He's not live, to be clear. That was a track, I reckon. So uh, getting some good shots of the outfielders there, handing the American flag across the fence. Uh, go over the quick, the starting lineups first for the visiting Madison Central Eagles. Ashland Estep batting first and bat playing center field. We have Cress. Let me find the, uh, yes, Anna Kate Cress, seventh grader, playing shortstop and batting second. Lexi Keener catching and batting third. Taylor Reeves, who has two home runs on the season, playing left field and batting fourth. Chloe Rison is playing first base and batting fifth. Haley Goss, also with two home runs this year, is playing designated player position, so she's going to be hitting and maybe playing multiple spots, batting sixth. Lydia Grinstead playing third and batting seventh. Bella Strunk pitching and batting eighth. Jenna Moore is batting ninth and uh, playing second base. And Cadence Muncy is in the flex position, will be playing right field defensively. For Madison Central, looking over at their lineup, Riley Sparks is starting at second base, batting first. Cassidy Hack in center field. Olivia Metcalf at shortstop. Brooklyn. Gilbo at third base, Cassidy Gentry at first, Adrian Linton at pitcher, Lydia Guerra at nine, Riley Harris at designated player, Devon Stewart catching, and Molly Neely in left. As we start the top of the first here, shows bunt but doesn't go, strike called. The the corner infielders rushing in there. As East up at the plate. Over here in a lot of uh, basketball games. Brings a lot of intensity to the field and the diamond. Going to be low for ball one. Got a 1-1 one -one count here. Corner still playing up, anticipating a bunt. Another interesting piece about softball, John, that differentiates it from baseball there are like seven different ways to bunt in softball. You have drag bunts, slap bunks, as she pops foul, and it comes <laughs> right at us. John, your biggest fear the entire drive up here was getting hit by a ball. I mean, I wasn't going to say that on the air, but that one was coming right oh, at Oh, no, me. huge sissy. Been whining <laughs> the whole time. Came right at us. Yeah, I had things are great. I had your back. I'm having a great time. If it came close, I would have thrown you in the way. One, two count. That's fine. I caught it with my face. <laughs> <laughs> that, that works. Should be an improvement. Linton, pitch, 2-2 two, two count, all even. Linton, John, I was looking at stats earlier today. Linton has pitched five innings and has seven strikeouts, giving up just three earned runs. 
Gentry, who is playing first base today, has seen a lot of innings on the hill. Why well, call it a hill? It's flat here at softball uh, for Madison Central as well. Has thrown the majority of the innings at 19.2 and has allowed no earned runs. So we'll see if Gentry makes it over to the mound today after pitching last night up at Franklin County. Still an even count. I'm going to the windup. Ball three. Count all four here, all full here for the first batter. A lot going on, John. Payoff pitch. It is hit to the outfield. Center fielder makes a play. That's one out. Great catch there by Cassidy Hack. One up, one down here for Central as Anna Kate Cress, the seventh grader playing up, comes up to the plate. And did I hear you say she's also going to be playing shortstop today? She is playing shortstop today. Currently hitting about 500 for the Lady Eagles. All one. Also gets walked quite a bit in her few uh, in just six at bats. An additional three plate appearances resulted in walks. Find it really impressive that we have a young seventh grader playing on varsity high school team, stepping into shortstop and pretty great batting average. Yeah, not only is she just stepping up and, and contributing, playing a, a very key position defensively, ball high there. See if Coach Z Carter gives her the green light here. Coach Carter has been with Madison Southern for quite a few years. Randy Hall, the head coach of Madison Central. Two coaches and two teams know each other well. We talked about this in the baseball game the other day. These, these ladies have played against each other for years. They know each other's tendencies. It's a, a lot of times the coach will have to yell out, pull hitter would shift over. In this situation, they just kind of know each other. A lot of travel ball in this county. They've had a lot of opportunities to play together. <laughs> Another foul ball. Thought that was coming a little closer to me. Yeah, I mean, it's creeping a little bit closer. That's uh, That hits the visitor's dugout there and then bounces right by John's head. Bring us another full count. Normally, we would talk about the pitch count being high for a baseball pitcher. In softball, there are no pitch count or inning regulations. Like I said, there, there have only two pitchers that have thrown for either of these teams on the season. After five or six games, ground ball to short, goes Ooh. under her legs. So it's going to be a good single. Just uh, went under the shortstop's leg, like you said. And uh, I don't know if that would count as an error or not, but it's definitely going to allow a runner on base. Yeah, Metcalf... Uh, Commits the error there. Doesn't do that a lot, so I don't expect to see more of those. But that does get a base runner on for Madison Southern, bringing up Lexi Keener, who has the highest batting average uh, for, for Madison Southern. The freshman started at catcher last year as an as eighth grader, so she's played up, got a lot of experience as well. One zero count. Runners are allowed to take off when the ball is released from the pitcher's hand. No leadoff in softball. No leadoffs. Ball low. Keener steps out to gather her thoughts. Waiting to get the call before she steps in the box. Popped up to the middle. Metcalf makes the play. That's two down here for the Eagles. 
in the top of the first. Reeves up to bat. Taylor Reeves has two home runs already on this early season. We mentioned it in the baseball game. I feel like uh, just a lot of uh, a lot of players hitting the long ball nowadays. Makes it fun to watch. It's certainly certainly the best ticket uh, to selling tickets in the major league game. Taylor Reeves has nine RBIs. Second most on the team behind Chloe Rison. Short pop-up back to the pitcher, and that's going to do it for the top of the first. We'll take a one-minute break and come back as Central comes up to bat right here on WBON-TV. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, we make it our priority to deliver the gentle, compassionate care that you deserve from a dentist. Offering single visit restoration on crowns, bridges, inlays, onlays, and veneers with CIRAC. Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry is equipped to handle all your dental needs from surgical implant placement and restoration, teeth whitening, root canal therapy, and more. And we now have the Comb Beam 3D technology for taking scans of the jaw. For your next dental appointment, call Jones Family and Cosmetic Dentistry at 859-985-0201. Looking for some fun? The Galaxy Bowling Center has a league for you. No matter your skill level, you can come out, make some new friends, and have a great time. Call 624-4444 for details. Or if you're more of a trivia person, Champions Grill has you covered every Tuesday starting at 7 with great prizes and all-you-can-eat wings for only $19.99. Why go anywhere else? The Galaxy Bowling Center and Champions Grill. Your ticket to fun just off I-75, exit 87 in Richmond. Back here to Madison Central High School as we're waiting for Madison Central to come up to bat for their first at bat of this game. Saw four Eagles come up to the plate in the first. Of course, Central got out of it. Coverage presented by Bishop Small Engine Repair of Richmond as Madison Southern warming up. To get things going, Bella Strunk's going to be on the bump for the Eagles here. The first district matchup between these teams of the season. Coming up first for Madison Central. Riley Parks playing second base, wearing number six. Madison Central with a red top, some white pants. Southern All Navy. Win the first pitch. Both corners playing in, ready for a bunt. Here's the pitch. Strike call, no bunt attempt. We'll see if she comes back with another attempt here. Actually, that first one was a ball, so it's going to make the count 2-0. and oh. Two parks here. Has some chance going on over Central Dugout, trying to get a rally going early on here in the first. Unattempt to no-go. And the payoff pitch for Strunk. Ground ball to first. Lydia Grinstead, or to third. Lydia Grinstead makes the play, and that's an out for Southern. Cassidy Hack coming up, playing center field. Made a nice play on a fly ball earlier. John, if you've noticed, a lot of the left-handed batters are the ones sending the foul balls our way. So I think we've got some righties coming up. Give us a little security and safety there in the dirt. Scooped by Keener. 
Ball one to hack. Looking at that wristband to get the pitch. Here it comes. Hit in the air to right. Great play made there by Muncie. Two up, two down is what the Lady Eagles were hoping for. And who's on deck to come up to the plate? Olivia Metcalf, who's been playing shortstop there for, for Central. Had an error, but then made up for it with a nice play there in the first. Lydia Grinstead still playing way up there at third. Strike one called there. John, you notice all the infielders wearing face masks. Yeah, I thought about going to the dugout, seeing if they had an extra one. Yeah. Uh, a lot of foul balls hit this way. Hate, I think that would help you out quite a bit, make you feel a little more safe. I thought about getting secure. under the table, you know. Just yeah, I get it. Foul ball to... Third baseline. 0 2 count. Two outs here for Southern. Looking to get back in and get the bats going just a little bit. See what Strunk dials up. Here's the payoff pitch. Popped up foul. Oh, John, I almost <laughs> had that one. I'm just so happy at what's happening here. Every foul ball, and she's right-handed. Every foul ball coming our direction. I was a little worried about our producer, Gage, on that one. I mean, not worried enough to actually get up and stop the ball from hitting him or our equipment. Going back at her here. Pop up to center field, making a play. E-step makes the catch. That's three up, three down for the Indians, and we're going to take a one-minute break and come back for the second inning here on WBON-TV. To some, it's just a boat. But to Jim, it's his escape from meetings, traffic, and the grind of daily life. He may not catch any keepers, but he wouldn't trade his day on the lake for anything in the world. That's why his boat is insured by Kentucky Farm Bureau. But it's not just Kentucky's Farm Bureau. It's Jim's Recharge the Battery Farm Bureau. My Farm Bureau. David Mayo, John Rader, and Chris Hornsby with Kentucky Farm Bureau. Orthopedic and Sport Physical Therapy will help guide you on your road to recovery. It is our mindset, a spirit driven to excellence, to help people heal faster and better. If you have pain or an injury or you need experts in sports medicine, Orthopedic and Sports Physical Therapy is your best choice in rehabilitation and you have direct access. In most cases, you do not need a referral to any of our seven locations serving the region. Just give OSPTKY a call. Visit our website at OSPTKY.com to find the location nearest you. And we're back here, WBON TV, coverage presented by Bishop Small Engine Repair of Richmond. I'm Jamie Boggs with John Bailey, Madison Central, Madison Southern, locked up at zero through one. No hits, no walks so far. One base runner got on because of an error. Otherwise, um, a lot of good plays in the field. Uh, when you're Pitching a baseball, a lot of it has to do with location and movement, and certainly that's the case here. The spin, because the softball is bigger, matter, matters a ton as well. So we're seeing a lot of miss hits, and almost every out so far has been kind of a light pop fly. I can only think of a couple of ground balls. One was fielded really well by Lydia Grinstead. I remember the other one, the error on shortstop for Central. Like you said, made up for it. One of the next plays with a great catch. Chloe Rison draws ball one there. A 
Ball two. See what uh, pitcher dials up here, tries to get back in the count. Good hitter's count here. Free to swing away a little bit more than normal. Hit by pitch. She's going to go to the plate. Next up is Haley Goss. Two home runs on the season. Also does some pitching for this team. Has pitched almost as much as Strunk has so far this season. First pitch to her is a ball. Bryson was hit by a pitch there. Got to go to first. And here's the pitch. Popped up. Down the right field line, mm -hmm. nearly a great play there by the second baseman. Couldn't come up with it. Good hustle there by Parks. You like to see that hustle, just not able to get to it. I mean, just barely missed it. Two one count. That's going to make it 2-2. Two, two. Payoff pitch on the way. Rice and ready to take off from first. All three, full count here. Like I said, a lot of uh, full counts so far earlier in this game with Linton on the mound, but pitch count normally not an issue. Completely different impact on the arm, throwing underhanded, foul ball. At my age, I'm not sure I can roll a ball without without hurting my arm. My rotator cuff's just throbbing watching her do that. Full count. Here comes another one. Oh, sorry. That was 2-2. Two, two. So now we're full. Blocked by the scoreboard a little bit there. Or blocked from the scoreboard, I should say. Calls time and steps out of the box. Make sure she's on the same page as the third base coach. Coach Z. Pitch fouled back. Long at bat here, John. There's a uh, bunch a lot of videos about baseball, softball. While the the form for hitting a lot of times is 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 very different, a lot of the philosophies are the same. And even if you're not getting hit, you're not getting on base. Having a quality at bat is such a uh, is so important because it does a lot of things for the defense, for the pitcher, ball four. We've got two runners on now. Going to bring up Lydia Grinstead. How's she done so far this season, John? Sorry, I had to pull it up. She's been at bat 18 times. She has three runs, two hits, four RBIs. Bunts at foul. Very common if you have runners on first and second to try to lay a bunt down, move both of them into scoring position with just one out. Liddy also coming in with one home run, so she could hit it out and bring both of them in that way too. Yep. Here's the pitch. Ball one.
Another ball. 2-1 count to Grinstead. You hear them yelling out a kind of a code, John. It, I'm, I'm very against the wristbands in baseball. I'm fouls another bunt straight back. Uh, I, I think it slows the game down. I, I'm a big fan of, of maybe I'm just old traditionalist and given the given the signs that makes the third base coach look like he's chasing a B, big fan of that. And softball, however, I think it's necessary because I did mention there's so many different types of bunts, which means there are a ton of different ways to defend bunts as Grinstead goes down with the first strikeout of the night. Uh, so many ways to defend bunts that it's impossible to have enough signs to call all the plays you need to call. So that's why we, the wristbands were originally put in play for softballs to really command all the different directions that people could be doing. But like you said, the Madison Southern High School baseball team is utilizing wristbands now. Almost everybody does. Just not a Has it made it to the fan. big leagues? Uh, so they have a play card defensively in their back pocket a lot of times, and um, and they'll use it that way. I haven't seen them use it on the field. Another pop up to the infield. That's going to be an infield fly. Less than two outs. Runners on first and second. Two outs. Now we've gone from two on and nobody out to. Down to your last out with Jenna Moore. Play second base coming up to play. Jenna Moore, 14 at bats, four runs, two hits, one RBI, one home run, and four times getting on base with walks on. Walk on. All strike two there, down 0 2. Take a two-strike approach here. You shorten everything up, get a little closer to the plate. You just want to get the bat on the ball. See if she can do that nearly over the plate. She spins it for ball one, one-two count. Everybody said, and here comes the payoff pitch once again. Strike three, and that's going to do it for the top of the second. We're going to take a one-minute break. Come back for more action right here on WBON-TV. Hey, uh, I didn't order any pizza. Jake from State Farm. After you saved me so much dough on insurance with that Parker promo, I devised a promo for you. Here's the deal, Parker. State Farm offers everyone surprisingly great rates. Right. Pepperoni pockets. Cuckoo crusty. There's no promo. It's just great race. And a cider ranch. When you want the real deal, call State Farm agent Jerry Goble in Richmond today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Tis the season, the season for sickness. Protect yourself and those around you with vaccinations at the Harness Health Pharmacies, powered by Mercy Health. Mercy Health Pharmacies offer vaccines for influenza, COVID-19, pneumonia, and RSV. Most vaccines are covered by the insurance, and in case they are not, Harness Health Pharmacy also partners with the primary care clinics for patients that are required by insurance to receive their vaccines there. Stop by the Harness Health Pharmacy in Irvin, located next to the Mercy Health Irvin Primary care and we're back for the bottom of the second inning here on WBON TV coverage presented by Bishop Small Engine Repair of Richmond Madison Central got out of a jam there first two batters got on base but ultimately the next three got out to end the half of an inning their lineup's going to turn over when they get back in but now we have Brooklyn Gilbo coming up to bat with Cassidy Gentry on deck. Bella Strunk still pitching for Southern. What can you tell me about Gilbo stats, yeah. John? Brooklyn's been on at bat 14 times, four runs, seven hits, three RBIs, one home run, and two walk-ons. I love watching softball pitchers pitch because of all the momentum. I mean, you have the 
the wind up. They wheel their arm entirely around. They also leap forward. Uh, so much of of pitching a softball and actually a baseball, if you're doing it right, but comes from your lower body power and that push off of the mound. And uh, Strunk certainly do a good job at it. I would be a coward though, because that puts you closer to the batter, and it could come back and hit you. Well, Brooklyn has not been afraid to steal the bases. She has two attempts and two stolen bases, 100% on those. So we've got to watch her if she does make it to first base. That's going to bring us to a 2-1 count. Strike three. Strike two, my bad. It was two one count, not one two, John. That's all right. I mean, I'm gonna need you to do better, but I'll forgive you this time. No Indians have struck out thus far. Had a ground out and two pop outs in the first. Another pop outs foul. Chloe Rice and given chase and can't get over to it. I'm gonna stay at two and two. Like we mentioned, John, just a ton of of kind of weak fly balls. Um, a lot of spin from the pitchers here. We'll see how the hitters can adjust. Pretty much the same result there. Goes over the dugout this time. Gilbo battling through this at bat. Here's the pitch. That one's hit deep to right. Right fielder's going back. It's going to come off the fence. Gilbo's looking at third. Relay throw into press at the cutoff, and that's a stand-up triple for Gilbo. Definitely the she, hardest hit ball of the day that we've seen so far. She got that one lined out. First two fouls over to the right. That one was lined up perfectly. I thought that one was going to go over the fence. Just a little short, but she makes it a stand-up triple. What a great at-bat, staying alive, keeping herself in there, and it pays off big time. Went over Muncie's head. She did a great job getting to it and getting it in, but not a lot you can do there. It's amazing, John. You look at this field, uh, and, you know, compared to the size of a, of a baseball field, and you think, oh, there's not that much room to cover. But, man, you can place a ball in a million different places and not worry about it getting caught, and that was uh, – a great shot there by Gilbo. Cassidy Gentry now up for the Indians, trying to get Gilbo across for the first run of the game. Ground ball hits shortstop. Cress take the out at first, and the run will score. An RBI there for Gentry as she gets Gilbo in. one nothing Indians here in the bottom of the second. Gentry had four RBIs before that one. Make it five on the season. And who's up to bat? Pitcher Andrea Linton up to bat now. Strike called on the pitch. Linton coming in, four runs, four hits for the year, four RBIs. Hard ground ball hit to second there. Goes off Moore's glove, and that's going to be an infield hit. We'll see how they score that one. But regardless, Linton gets on first with a hard hit ball. And this central offense tries to continue to roll. She's going to have a runner come in for her. Courtesy running for the pitcher there. Let you know who that is when we get a number. Can't see it from here. John breaking out the binoculars. Official scorebook gave more an error on that one.
A little hard to see. I think it was number eight, but not a great view. Looking at her wristband the whole time. Can you see her wristband, John? Can we know <laughs> their plays? Those are some pretty awesome, pretty awesome binoculars. Number three, thanks there we for go. zooming in there uh, on the <clears throat> camera not in use. Michaela Bickett in pinch running. Got a 2 0 count. Guerra. One out, two balls, no strikes. Drunk with a pitch. Runners going and a single to right field. Bounces off of Muncie's glove. She's That's going to be at least two. three there for Guerra. She may, she's going to stop at third. Think we're going to be credited with a single there, advancing to third on the air for Muncie in right field. Just couldn't keep that one in front of her. And just like that, the mighty, the Madison Central Indians up 2 0. Number 10, Riley Harris coming to bat. Coach Hall telling Kiera what to do on uh, whatever he's calling here. Grinstead still playing way up at third. Here's the pitch fouled off. On the check swing, going to be an 0-1 count. Harris has one RBI on the year. Love to get another one here. Madison Central hitter is doing a good job going with the outside pitch and taking it, taking it oppo, as the kids say, to the opposite field. One one count here to Harris. Coach Z coming out. Talk to Strunk on the mound, giving some specific instructions. Keener having a chat with Moore and Rice and over at first. Coach Hall pulling together his hitter and runner. Got little conferences everywhere, making sure everybody's on the same page. And we're sitting here. Do we have two outs? One out. One out. One out, one ball, one strike. Getting my official hit error calls from Game Changer. In case you're not familiar, it's uh, an app used in baseball fields around the world. Very few teams still use a paper book. Game Changer is kind of the official book of, of travel softball and baseball and has made its way to school ball as well. Ball two. To Harris. 2-1 two, count. Game Changer, a great way to follow along when games are not on the air. Sometimes you'll be able to see some video. Sometimes it'll be just the play-by-play, -play, but better than nothing. Jamie, you've mentioned uh, several different types of bunts. Do you want to talk about some different kinds that we could see here tonight? Oh, man. Yeah, I've, uh, I was talking to somebody who knows both these teams pretty well earlier. He told me I'm going to see a couple slappers later. So uh, walk me through what a slapper is <laughs> a slap compared bunt. to. Uh... So a slap bunt, so... A normal bunt, a bunt that you think about in baseball, is you let the ball come to the bat and you try to maybe guide it toward the baseline a little bit, but you're trying to receive it and not let it go very far. A slap bunt, kind of a push bunt in baseball, you're really trying to, it's almost like a half swing, like you're trying to hit it through a hole or get it by the pitcher to get a run in or to give yourself a chance to run it out. There are drag bunts where you can essentially take off running while you bunt it. A lot of left-handed players will do that. A lot of people hit left-handed just to do that. So some good, uh, some good players will be laying down the drag bunt. There, of course, bunts where you want to sacrifice in order to advance a runner. So you pretty much just normally bunt it uh, to try to to give yourself a chance to beat it out, but you don't always. So, and I'm sure there are three or four more. But a lot of different bunt calls 
You can call which side to bunt to. We now got runners on first and third, both teams making sure they got their ducks in a row. Common for the runner to try to take second, and if the throw's made to second, for the runner from third to go home, we'll see if Central has that in their bag right now. There goes the runner, squared to bunt, and they're just gonna give up second base. Now runners on second and third for the Indians. Still only one out. Stewart up to the plate now. Catcher for this central team. Coach Strunk, or Coach Strunk, Bella Strunk, talking to her coach uh, about the pitch call and trying to make sure everybody's on the same page here. Stewart has two RBI so far on the year. Ball one. No runs, one hit at two at bats. I think that was a uh, ball two as well. The previous batter was walked. That was the first base on balls of, of the game. Been a pretty cleanly pitched game so far. There's a strike, strike one. Now, if you're Stewart here, you're you're at the bottom of the lineup, like you said, not a not a ton of productivity so far. I'm sure, a lot of coaches saying, "Hey, do a job here. Way to do a job." As she's now even up two two. Basically, I need this run to score. If you can hit a deep fly ball, they can tag up and score. If you can get a ground ball up the middle to give them time to score. We want this run to score. You do your job and get the run in. You don't have to get a hit. You don't have to get on base. Get the run in. That's your job. Get it done. And that's what she's trying to do. She's battles through this at bat. And the payoff pitch. Great Hard hit, hit to ball. center field. Nearly a double play there. Great play at center field by Estep. Very hard hit ball there from Stewart. Tried to double her off there at second, and it was cut off. Uh, I don't think that throw would have been in time to get her either way, but that was a really good play. Now you've got two outs. Almost a line drive to center field. That ball I thought was going to drop a little bit before it got to her. It's a great catch and pass the second as the runner had to get back. Very hard hit ball there. Now Molly Neely up to bat. Playing left field today. There you go. I think that uh, looks like what I assume a slap bun is. She kind of check. There was kind of a check swing as she was leaving a box. You can see here on the replay. And we're. There it was. Got right through the middle there. Cassidy Hack up to bat. Yep, sorry, that was Riley Parks. I skipped. Skipped her there. Neely is playing the flex, so she's only in the field. Runner takes second, like last time. Not wanting to risk throwing the ball away or letting the run get in. Three nothing lead, two runners in scoring position, and your two hitter coming up. Yep, she has six runs on the year, seven hits, three RBIs. Trying to hope for some more here. 1 0 count, here's the pitch. Strike one. Ground ball to short. Crest comes up. Mishandled there by Rison. 
And that's going to let two runs score there on the ground ball. And that kind of opens this game. Blows it wide open. Five runs scored so far here for the Indians in this inning alone. As they lead five to zero. See how that was scored officially in the book. I think we got an error on Rice in there. Throw may have been a little low. She couldn't handle it. We got two runs in. Now the whole team's going to come together. You got to, when things aren't going your way, sometimes you just got to stop the bleeding, come together and just have a moment to gather yourselves, to encourage each other. All while being serenaded through the Jeopardy theme song by the opponent. <laughs> yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of shenanigans happening there Matt cap up to bat and I don't mean at this ball game I mean in every soundboard on every field in the world last night I was at a game and and every time a foul ball was hit they played a, a glass breaking sound ball hit deep to center he stepped back and she's going to make the play that's the third out of the inning 5-0 Madison Central Indians we're going to take a minute break and we'll be back here on WBON TV For over 40 years, Lakes Funeral Home and Crematory in Berea have been helping families through the hardest times in their lives. With traditional burial planning to cremation, the folks at Lakes can help you honor your loved ones with final arrangements. Lakes can also help pre-plan now. Let your family members know what you want and help ease their burden. Visit lakesfuneralhome.com to learn how easy it can be to pre-plan. Lakes Funeral Home and Crematory, the only on-site crematory in Madison County. Whitaker Bank in Madison County is your local bank for convenience. With more branches than literally any other bank in Madison County, why go anywhere else? Whitaker Bank is known for their friendly customer service and easy access drive throughs Whitaker Bank, your home for local, friendly, family, banking. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. Top of the third here at Madison Central as the Indians lead the Madison Southern Eagles 5 nothing after two innings. A lot of damage done there for the Indians in the second. Uh, a few errors in addition to some timely hits. And uh, we have a five-run lead here. We'll see if the Eagles can mount a comeback. They've got to get some offense going, John. Haven't uh, they they had one base runner in the first, two in the second, but nobody has moved further than second base. Linton remaining on the mound for Madison Central and Southern back at the top of their lineup with Ashlyn Eastep coming up to the plate. 0 for 1. She popped out in the first inning. Everybody seems to be in place. Maybe waiting for the base coaches to get over there. Have a potential injury over here in the southern dugout. Trainers inside. Not exactly sure what happened over there. Checking in. Umpires coming over to check as well. John, it's, uh, it's, it's always interesting to, to have these rivalry games and really to be in the middle of any competition and, and then an injury happens. I, I, I think she's going to be okay, but they're making sure. Um, an injury happens and it really just stops everything. And whatever momentum you had could, could be lost there's concern for the person that was hurt as we're getting back into play here. She seems to be just fine. I still can't see a number there, but all checked out. Yeah, I couldn't okay. really uh, tell what caused any kind of injury. Just always kind of an eerie feeling. It was very quiet. They were still playing music. It was low, uh, an eerie feeling, but glad everybody's all right. The Southern hopefully can regroup, make this an interesting ball game. 
He step attempts the drag, but pulls back on the low pitch for ball one. Right called there as she uh, lays off the bunt there again. Two one count to E step. Linton throwing a really good game has kept her composure even when runners got on. Still haven't seen a Southern player really square ball up. Bunt there is going to go foul from East Up. Trying to drag it while she takes off to first. We've seen her on the basketball court quite a bit, John. She's really fast. I'd say if she gets that bunt down, it's really hard to to throw her out. Puts a lot of pressure on the defense, and that's uh, kind, of the, kind of the purpose of it. She leads the team in runs and hits. Showing bunt early this time. Pulls it back. I apologize, not hits. Lexi Keener leads the team in hits this year. 2-2 two, two count now. Still showing early bunt. She's probably going to pull it back with two strikes. Be surprised to see her try to lay it down. Foul ball coming our way. Still a 2-2 two, two count. I saw it. I got you. I think I'm in a good position to protect John Gage. Our producer may be on his own. That's ball four. He step on. Also leads the team in stolen bases. See if she goes into action there. Try to get in scoring position as seventh grader Cress is up to bat. Seventh grader at Ferristown Middle School. Six at bats, three runs, three hits for the year, two RBIs. Ball breaks down into the dirt. Good job by Crest to pull her bat back on that one. Like you said, seventh grader playing up on the varsity softball team. Just really impressive stepping into that role anyway, but then playing shortstop at that. That one's coming over, <laughs> foul ball. I was hoping you could hear it on our mics. Uh, not quite close enough. I want to go ahead and apologize publicly for what I may or may not say if one's hit at my face. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Do we have a dump button, Gage? <laughs> I don't think we do. What kind of delay are we looking at here, Producer Gage? It looks at like us getting canceled is what it's going to look like. <laughs> yeah, um, certainly don't know the youth softball landscape as well as I know the baseball landscape, but I hear that Cress's bat is a big reason that she's up here. Batting second is a obviously a uh, a good sign of that. And she's now looking at a one-two count, trying to, if nothing else, get E-step over in scoring position. Two-two now. And, and you're right, John, the, the age difference. And it, it certainly happens in baseball sometimes. You'll see a middle schooler playing up and playing varsity. Hard hit ball ends up going down the line, foul. But to put it in perspective, yes, a, seven, a middle schooler playing up is impressive. If you put it into perspective of this person may not even be a teenager versus somebody that can vote, I think that really gives you a little bit more instinct of, of what you're going for here. But, like I said, Chris... Holds her own as she works the count to full. It was a hard hit ball earlier that ended up being foul. That was probably the best that Southern squared a ball up yet. Steps out to collect herself. Pops it up, and here it comes, <laughs> right at us. <laughs> that literally, I caught it with my butt. It was in my chair. I'm just so happy right now. 
I caught it. That was amazing. I'd like to thank our uh, cameraman, Beck, for coming over. I mean, it was coming slow enough. I was okay. Yeah. But I, uh, I like that Beck had my back. Another foul ball straight back this time. That was. I want to find a rabbit hunting spot for you, Beck. That was <laughs> nice. Saving my life. I, uh, that's that's the kind of content we're here for. <laughs> yeah. We were having a good time. So, to be clear, I leaned <laughs> up away from the ball, and they got trapped in my chair <laughs> under me. I don't know how that happened. But it's uh, science, another foul ball. John, I got a question. What have you done to Anna Kate Crest to make her hit so many softballs at you? I don't know. Uh, is she a lefty? She's not. She okay. is pulling it over here. And to be clear, we can't John can't really bat. see the batter. So he does, it's not that he doesn't know what a lefty looks like. It's uh, there is a uh, There's a dugout between us and the batter's box. We cannot see it other than on a computer screen. Oof. Really? Linton wanting that call there, but ball four. Caress is going to get the walk after about a eight, nine pitch at bat. Really impressive at bat there. Gage, you okay, buddy? Gage <laughs> got out of dodge at least. It did look like it was coming for his face, to be fair. Keener up to bat. He takes. I think it's pitch. worth noting that Gage did not try to protect the equipment. Maybe that's what Beck was doing. Was Gage was Beck protecting me or the equipment? I'm more concerned about <laughs> Mr. Beck reaching under my bottom to get the ball <laughs> before anybody else was close. That was uh, a lot going on. Keener. Keener finds a gap. She's going to bring one in. Rips it. Single between second and third. For the first RBI of the game for Southern. Keener, again, a freshman with a uh, a big bat that she carries around with her. I just happened to be up at uh, D-Bats in Lexington a few weeks ago, um, taking one of my kids to hit and got to see Keener with some time in the cage. And she's got a lot of, uh, lot of power, a lot of built-up aggression. Hitting over 600 on the season. Now we got two on, no outs. With Taylor Reeves coming up to bat. Madison Central talking it over on the mound. Coach Z bringing his hitters and uh, base runners together to talk as well, getting a strategy together, and they're all back and ready to go now. I've been getting texts off the air about basketball scores. We had a little upset, Colorado upset Florida, Yale. Is anybody really upset about that, though? Hey <laughs> Yale is upsetting Auburn at the moment. John, 78, I, 76 with I, nine I seconds you, to go. I get what you're trying to do, but I think I mean, I don't think it's a stretch that most of our listeners probably don't care about college basketball right now. So if you could uh, take the salt out of that wound, that would be delightful. Hard hit ball foul right at Coach Z. I'm going to call for the ball over here if you bring up college basketball again. With Kentucky out of the tournament, I am uh, officially just rooting for chaos. In March Madness. Let's let... That's happened. Right field. We'll see if it drops. It does. Fair. Going to advance the runners. He holds Cress at third. Now we have bases loaded. Ken Keener advances there. Reeves hit it to right field down the line. The right fielder, Ger Lena Guerra, made a great play on it. Just was on the move and didn't watch it all the way into her glove. So that's an error on the right fielder. And now we have bases loaded with Chloe Rison coming up to bat. Has a lot of power in her swing. Can change the game on one pitch here as she takes strike one. Chloe Rison for the year, seven hits, one run, 11 RBIs which is a great stat if you're an eagle watching this at bat. Linton delivers a pitch. He spun that one well. 
got Ryson off balance. Now she's down 0-2. Take that two-strike approach. Try to get the bat on it. No outs. Don't need to hit a grand slam. Don't need to clear the bases. Here, do a job as she takes ball one. Payoff pitch in the dirt. And Ryson's going to strike out. Would normally be a drop third strike, but it's less than two outs and first base is occupied. So no dry, drop third in play there. Kaylee Goss coming up now. Designated player. Another powerful hitter here. All the runners ready to get on their horses and go. Seen a lot more breaking balls since since bases got loaded here. Trying not to serve up anything anything that's flat and on a line that they could hit hard. Kaylee has four RBIs this year. Hoping to get at least a couple more. One one count to Goss here. Another breaking ball for strike two. She's really commanding that well, keeping it low. You leave that spin ball up a little too high and it's easy to tee off on. Payoff pitch. Ball three. Take strike three. Huge pitch there from Linton. Two outs. Two strikeouts in a row with bases loaded. That's big time production there. Now we've got Lydia Grinstead up. She's going to take the first one. Ball one. Now in a situation, ball two, where she does have to get on the base to make something happen. You can't give yourself up in this scenario. Currently has a 2-0 count. Here's the pitch. Strike one. Official or uh, some some fans thought that was a little high. Thought the rise ball missed the strike zone. Instead, swinging a miss. Now it's a two-two count. Payoff pitch. All three. Er, nope. Ball four. Nicked her. Oh, she got hit. Hit by pitch. That runs one in. Great awareness there of Grinstead. Cuts the lead to three. Your Indians up five to two over the Madison Southern Eagles. Bella Strunk up trying to help herself out a little bit as the pitcher. Bella Strunk comes in to this game with two RBIs. Keener on third, Reeves on second. A hit could potentially get two more runs on the board. Either way, you're already back in this ball game. One, one count. Yeah. 
Here's the pitch. Big swing and miss there by Strunk. Now it's a one two count. Probably take a little bit of oomph off that swing. Here comes the payoff pitch. Ball two, two, two count. Linton doesn't like the pitch call. Shakes it off. He'll take the second one. And here it comes. Foul ball. She's going to hang tight. See another pitch. And man, Reeves was was moving on that one. She's intent on scoring from second if any ball gets put in play. Full count. Big pitch here. The runners will take off on the pitch. Obviously can't get caught stealing. This is either going to be an out, a hit, a walk, or a foul ball. So no risk to taking off after the ball is released. And there they go. Swing. To short, she backs up on it. And that's going to do it. Man, great job by Linton there to get out of that jam. We're going to take a one-minute break and come back for the bottom of the third here on WBON-TV. For years, Richmond residents have been searching for a heating and air company that can do it all. That search is now over. Don't let the name fool you. Fayette Heating and Air serves all over Central Kentucky for both commercial and residential customers. With Fayette Heating and Air, they promise that no matter the issue, no matter the time, you can expect award-winning heating repairs the first time, every time. Visit FayetteHeating.com to learn about special financing and how to sign up for the Comfy Club. With Fayette Heating and Air, complete home solutions. Gwen's Fine Jewelers voted best of the best jewelry store and voted best of the best jewelry repair shop. Gwen's has the best prices on diamonds. Let Gwen's design your dream ring. Gwen's Fine Jewelers, located next to Hobby Lobby in the Carriage Gate Shopping Center, Richmond, or find them online at Gwen'sFineJewelers.com. Welcome back to Madison Central High School as the Madison Southern Eagles put a couple runs on the board there in the top of the third to get a little closer. Madison Central leads here on WBON-TV. Coverage presented by Bishop Small Engine Repair of Richmond. Got a couple subs coming in here for Madison Southern. Goss going to first in place of Ryson. And at second base in place of Jenna Moore, we have number four. 15, who is not listed on the KHSAA roster, but is right here, Allie Wilson, an eighth grader. I, resourceful, John. There's like another it. roster right beside my face. Coming in at second for more. Bryson moves over to third, and Grinstead has a seat. The outfield... Nope, sorry, Grinstead moves to left field. A lot of movement here. Reeves moves over to right from left. So what do you see as a coach, Jamie, to make those adjustments when you uh, seem to be settled in halfway through this game and then make a move from, like, third to the outfield? What do you... Well, I mean, there, there can be a number of reasons. One, if we're seeing a lot of tendencies of the ball being hit in a certain area, for example, they have hit a ton of hard hit balls at right field. So they're moving Reeves over there, who they may feel is a, a really strong defender, not to take anything away from Muncie, who was over there. But you may move certain players to certain positions in anticipation of them getting more action over there. You may sub in and out uh, to move around hitters in, in, in the lineup, maybe do a double switch, try to get a better hitter in in a certain position. Uh, or sometimes really just to give somebody a break. Maybe uh, you get hit by a pitch, you need to, to sit for a few minutes. That's why we have this designated player uh, position here for Goss to, to come in 
play some defense. Also does a little bit of pitching. I don't know if we're going to see her do that tonight, but a lot of moves all at once, it seems. So Coach Z has his, his strategy. We'll see how it plays out. Southern desperately needs to not let the Indians build on this lead. 2-0 count. As we hear the uh, the chants coming from the dugout. Gilbo at the plate had a huge triple her last at bat. There's a strike, 2-1 count. How do you feel about the chants, John? Yeah, I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It takes me back to high school. Those have been a thing for a long time. Hadn't heard them in a while. Don't see as many of those in baseball. Uh, after you get out of, of Little League, you will see some, but not nearly enough foul ball. 2-2 two, two count. I say not nearly enough. I mean just not a lot. Um, yeah, definitely a fun part of the game. Central trying to, to build on this lead. They don't want to leave themselves in a situation where Southern can come back with a couple hits. Ball four. Gilbo on base once again for the Indians. That's going to bring up Gentry. Gentry comes into the game, 13 at bats, 10 hits, and four RBIs. Hard hits that one over second base. Middle. Great job by Estep to come up and play the ground ball, but can't get it to second in time for the out. That's a single for Gentry, who's now one for two on the day. Runner the first to second with no outs. Linton now up to the plate again. Got a courtesy runner coming in. So they're all getting on the same page. The central team is averaging 10 runs per game so far through the season. Lowest scoring game was five to nothing against East Jesmond. Next up was Bryan Station. They had a score of eight. Everything else has been 15, 15, 16. It's a lot, lot of, of runs. runs. <laughs> a lot of runs in one in one game. A lot of production from this entire lineup. And especially in like I know in baseball you can you can have a really good lineup and you can hit well for a while, but you're gonna run into a pitcher that shuts you down. Or you may have a shutdown pitcher, but in baseball they can only pitch every few days. If you've got a lights out pitcher in softball and you're playing a team with one, you're more likely to, to run into a buzzsaw. So for them to continually put up that many runs in everybody's best pitcher is certainly a testament to their ability. Foul Third ball. Ryzen steps over and knocks it down. The official a little bit late with the foul ball call there. I thought that one was going to be called fair. Uh, Madison Southern can get the bats going as well. They've scored 14, 15 twice. They've scored uh, the lowest scoring game they've had is also five runs. Just a little bit lower on the average of the year for the Eagles. Score nine in a loss last night. Ball gets away from Keener, and the runners advance to second and third. Brings the count to 2-2. Two, two. Forward a wild pitch on Strunk. Ground ball, another one right up the middle. Calico comes around home trying to score and slips. Is able to make it back in time before she's tagged. Was as the courtesy runner trying to uh, make it home from second. Tripped over the bag a little bit there. She did, but that brought in another runner and a runner on third and first. 
Gonna make this a six to two ball game in favor of the Indians. Solid hit there by Linton, and she's gonna get a courtesy runner herself there. Lena, Lena Guerrera coming up to the plate. Sorry, Jamie. Yep, I was gonna say those exact words, so thanks. Guerrera so far today is one for one. Strike called and courtesy runner takes second on that pitch. So now two runners in scoring position. The pitch from Strunk. Called low there. All one. Courtesy runner, Michaela Beckett. Beckett. Strike two. One, two count. Strung trying to get out of this without any more damage. Already having given up a run, two runners in scoring position and, and no outs. That's a tall order. Counts even at two and two. All three really wanted that call. Didn't get it. Now we're uh, one pitch away from potentially bases loaded. That was a great Nintendo game, John. Bases, bases loaded. loaded. Circa 1992. I don't know. <laughs> Ball hit right back up the middle. That's three hits in a row. Right back at second base. Press playing the gap a little bit there. And it was too far away for her to get to it. Makes it a seven to two lead for the Indians. Coach Z coming out. Looks like he's going to make you a pitching change. Bring Goss in. While she's warming up, we are going to take a one minute break. And we'll come back for the rest of this inning on WBON TV. I'm Michelle. And I'm Jennifer. And in the spring of 1992, Bishop's Small Engine Repair was born in our mom and dad's barn in Esco County. Then in the fall of 1992, we made the move to Madison County, where we are today. With the support of our family, customers, and community, we have continued to grow in the outdoor power industry. With a full line of products from Cubby Deck, Grasshopper, Echo, and Shindawa, we can help you tackle your yard so you can enjoy it with your family. Bishop's Small Engine Repair, where our focus is our customer. Stop on in, 119 North Estel Avenue in Richmond. We can't wait to see ya. Whether you're looking for dependability in the game or on the road, Madison County is where you'll find it. Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond has the trucks you can depend on and a winning tradition just like our great local sports teams. Come see us at Jack Burford Chevrolet in Richmond or check us out at jackburford.com to see our lineup of dependable trucks and become part of the winning tradition. Welcome back to Madison Central, the Lady Indians lead seven to two over the Eagles of Madison Southern. Got a pitching change here. Kaylee Goss coming into the game for the Eagles. Goss has pitched 13, a little over 13 innings. Has given up 10 earned runs, has an ERA just over five. Placing Bella Strunk and John, I don't know that that Strunk was was missing her spots. I think the central team is really just a, a, a really strong offensive group as we've seen 
throughout their scores on the season, and that's carried over to tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think Pitcher was doing anything wrong at all. I think this is a high-powered offense from the Indians, and we're seeing we're seeing that. And they did have a couple defensive errors in the second, but that's not going to account for seven runs. Been a lot of hits. We'll see what changes here. Strunk goes over to first, and Goss now on the mound. Harris up to bat. I believe we are back at the top of the lineup. Nope, this will be the uh, eighth hitter. For Madison Central. First pitch. Check swing called a strike. Again, two runners in scoring position, no outs. Goss coming in here to stop the bleeding. Keener getting the call on her wristband and Harris steps into the box. Wind up the pitch. Fly ball hit deep to right off the fence. Going to let two runners score. She makes the throw to home. Both runners do get in on that double. Again, went off the fence. Not a ton you can do there. Reeves and right field did a great job getting the ball in. Like you said, off the fence. I thought that one had a chance to go all the way, too. I think a lot of the people in the crowd did, too. I think they were looking for that to go over the fence. There are a lot of people right there, too. Yeah, just like that, we have a 9-2 to two ball game here in favor of the Indians. So they're still trying to find their first out of this inning. Another check swing called for a strike. Harris on second, Stewart up to bat. Foul ball, we'll bring the count to 0-2. The Eagles in desperate need of an out here. Although, really good offensive performance here by Central. Also, got out of some defensive jams. They did give up two runs there in the top of the third, but... Had runners on in every inning, and Linton has done a great job pitching her way out of the jams and strong defense. Two two count now. Payoff pitch. Another foul ball. Thankfully, not in our direction. I was going to move just in case. <laughs> yeah, it never hurts. Better to be safe than sorry and get broken with a softball. And, you know, they call it a softball, John. It's just as hard as a baseball. It's not and soft. a lot bigger. Well, you see all the infielders wearing the face masks, and that's for, that's for good reason. In middle school, outfielders are required to wear those as well. I was at a game where an outfielder got hit in the face with a fly ball and it I mean the ball's so big that it does a ton of damage so definitely dangerous and of course the infielders are much closer than they would be on a baseball field ground ball to Crescent short she makes the play at first great throw to third she's trying to go home Grinstead makes the throw not in time. The run is going to score from second. Harris timed it well, going to third on the throw from Crescent Short. Slides into third, and the ball gets away, and she's able to get up and score. Ten to two. Now the bases are clear. That was a good play by Cress there to get the out. Kind of a clean slate here for Goss. Parks 
leadoff hitter up to bat. Had a great slap bunt between third and short last time. Strike called on the outside corner. One one. Ooh, line drive to the pitcher, but she takes it, makes the throw, and out on first. That's the first out of this inning so far, and what a heads-up play by the pitcher. Slapped it right back at her. Uh, looks like you got part of her hand as well. Did a great job stopping it. That was a good catch over there at first by Strunk, and that's the, uh, the second out of the I'm inning. I'm sorry, second. Um, but it did get her hand. Trainer coming out. Andy Williams. You know, as a pitcher, you do use your entire body in the pitching motion, but obviously your hand is super important. If if you can't get the proper grip or something's just out of whack, or even just if it's uncomfortable, it changes everything about your grip because it's so hard to throw strikes consistently, let alone put the ball in places where they can't hit it hard. I never could throw strikes, never was able to pitch. It appears as if she's staying on the mound. She's not going to let that slow her down. Again, made a great play, throwing the ball to first for the out. And we'll just have to see if it impacts her control. She hasn't had control issues up to this point, hasn't. They're going to let her get a few pitches in to see how it feels. You know, I think if, uh, I'll be honest with you, Jamie, if that's me, I think I'm just going to grab my bat, grab my glove, hit the truck, go home. Well, she has a glove. She has a face mask on. What? What equipment would you need? Have you ever seen little giants where the boy is wrapped in bubble wrap? Yeah. That's about it. That's what you would need to pitch from 46 feet. I'd like to see that. Two down. Bottom of the third here at Madison Central. Coverage presented by Bishop Small Engine Repair of Richmond on WBON TV. And there is... The first pitch to hack, ball one. She's 0 for 2 so far in the game. Ground ball hits to Rison. She's going to make the throw. And he said she stayed on the bag. Central wanted to uh, appeal that and say Strunk pulled off the bag. But that's the third out. And we're going to head to the fourth right back here on WBON after this break. Hi, I'm Haley, one of the owners and managers at Just Love Coffee in Berea. Just Love Coffee is a franchise that was set up as a vision of love to help children get adopted. Just Love Coffee is a full-service restaurant that features artisan coffee creations plus an all-day food menu that includes golden waffles, delicious sandwiches, and filling craveable wraps. Just Love Coffee, a half mile off exit 76 in Berea in our newly renovated location at 636 Chestnut Street. And at the half, EKU leads state 21-7. I love the way these look. Thanks. Yeah, go Colonels. Is it here? Hey, Coach. It's right here, but shouldn't you be at the game? Carry your favorite team with you everywhere you go with a new EKU-branded debit card from CG Bank. No matter what season it is, always show your Colonel pride. Has anyone seen Coach? Back for the top of the fourth on WBON TV. Coverage brought to you by Bishop Small Engine Repair. I'm Jamie Boggs with John Bailey in the Madison Central Softball Indians lead Madison Southern 10 to 2 after a steady offensive performance here from Central. Southern changed pitchers in the middle of the last inning, and uh, they got some work to do here, John, if they want to stay in this game and, and really avoid getting run ruled. I was going to ask you what the run rule was in softball. Great question, John. Back to action. I don't know the <laughs> answer. I guess we will find out. If I'm a, if I'm a betting man, I'm guessing it's 12 after 4, 10 after 5, and 8 after 6. 
but I have been wrong before. A lot of numbers you just said. None of them make any sense or matter. This Allie Wilson, who subbed in earlier, now up to bat. Her first plate appearance of the game. Came into play second base. Allie Wilson, uh, two runs for the year. One one count as she looks at the strike there. Also have her down for zero at bats. So she's coming in, relieving someone on base. Her first plate appearance of the season, it seems. The eighth grader trying to get a hit off the senior who loses it and it rolls in for a ball. Pitch, all low. Counts now at 2-2. Two, two. Payoff pitch from Linton. Foul ball. Wilson wants to hang around and see another one. Linton's pitched a real gem here. She has given up two runs. But she has pitched herself out of some jams and has been very resilient. I was going to say she got in a little bit of trouble with uh, some runners advancing, I think, the second and third. And then she had two strikeouts in a row. Full count here to Wilson. After Wilson, we'll head back to the top of the lineup for Southern. So hoping to get something going here and to cut into this eight-run deficit. All four. Ashlyn Estep on her way to the plate. Step over one on the game. Got on base earlier. Making sure Wilson's all tied up over there on first. I have a hard time tying my shoes anyway, John, let alone with batting gloves on. He step attempts to drag bunt and it goes foul. As we saw Gilbo at third rushing up to field the ball. You have so little time as a defender because the bases are just 60 feet away. It's a, it's a quick run over there. He spun that one, landed low for a ball. Then waiting for the call. Ball two, two one to East Step. Heading into the top of the lineup for Southern. Ball three. Linton has not walked very many in this game so far. Step really wanted that ball for, did not like that call very much at all, but now we're full at three and two. No outs here in the top of the fourth. Here comes the payoff pitch. Ball four. She's walked two in a row. Now with runners on second and first. Press coming up to the plate. Also 0 for 1 today. Had a great at bat her last time out. To work the count and got walked. Looks like we're going to get a mound visit here. Coach Randy Hall talking it over with the ladies, making sure they're all calm and ready to go.
He's going to maybe make a pitching change here. And Looks he like does. Two pitchers for this Madison Central team, Cassidy Gentry and Andrea Linton. Gentry, correct me if I'm wrong, John, has not given up an earned run on the entire season. Yeah. She's there pitched over 19 innings, two runs, neither of them earned, has a zero ERA with 25 strikeouts. That's as impressive a stat line as you will see. <laughs> Actually, that's not Gentry. 32 coming in. You have a 32 on your roster? I do not. Let me check my lineup card here. Andrea Linton is number 33, but no 32 on my lineup. Gentry is listed as 36 on mine. Holgrove coming into the game may have a different number on the official roster, but Colgrove is not Gentry. Has not pitched a ton, at least of varsity this season, but coming in relief here for Linton. I don't even have Colgrove on my roster at all. Looking at the uh, KHSAA rosters on their websites where we're getting that information. She is checking in for Linton, putting her mask on and ready to go. We'll see if she can shut down this Southern offense. As they have two on, no outs in the top of the fourth. Got an alert calling for rain in the area. Starting here in about 25 minutes, I'm going to check the radar, see how things are looking over us right now. All right, Miss Cole Grove, if you could uh, get ready to go. I don't want to get rained off. Looks like if we can get out of here before 845, we might be dry. Foul ball going straight to Beck. That was hit hard. The, right at our That's camera. the hardest foul ball hit over here. That was uh, well past the third base. Beck didn't flinch. Got a good close-up of that ball. I'm going to be honest with you. I think it was Crest that hit the last one at us. And now she's got a 1-1 count. That was a, If she could have lined that one out, it would have went out of this park. That was, <laughs> was a liner. Felt the wind off of it, John. That was me getting out of the way, Jamie. <laughs> True. Fouls that one straight back. One, two count to the seventh grader. Might have to get with her after the game, let her know how nervous she makes me. I think you should. Don't get too close. If she has a bat in her hand. Two strikes. Here's the pitch. Got away from her. Tried to spin that one. Two, two. Coach Z encouraging young Cress. She's, she's trying to do some damage, get her team back in the ball game. Swing and a miss. Oh. There was a drop was third Was it a drop strike. third strike? And she made it to first base. First base was occupied, so she's going to be out. That rule does not apply with less than two outs if there's a runner on first. However, the other two did advance. We have runners on third and second. With Keener up, who had a nice hit to the left side in her last time up. She's one for two on the evening. Comes in with eight runs for the year before tonight's game. Six RBIs before tonight. So Keener is definitely a weapon for this Madison Southern team. And true freshman, right? Yep. 
funny Tina story. Will be helping her team for several more years. Six or seven years ago, I was coaching a uh, coach pitch team of baseball players. Keener's dad called me and said, hey, I've, uh, I'm wondering if my daughter would want to play baseball with you guys. And, and she ended up finding a softball team. It would, I didn't say no. It wasn't anything like that. But watching her hit now, I kind of wish I had uh, scooped her up when I had the opportunity. 1-1. One, one. Turned into a fantastic ball player and hitter. If she ever decides to go to baseball, I'll have a spot waiting for her. One, two count now. She takes strike two. One out, two runners in scoring position. Reeves on deck for the Eagles. Line drive hit very hard at Gilbo at third. Great catch. And she dove and tried to double up Wilson at third. Great play by Gilbo and Wilson to get back. Yeah, great job to get back. But, man, what an incredible play by the third baseman. Almost turned a double play. And that's what, I mean, she's playing up. That ball was hit right at her face, and she did not flinch. I'm at least 75 feet from her, and I think I flinched. The hard-hitting Lexi Keener. All one to Reeves. Two outs here. Top Still of the fourth. Need to get these runs across if you're Southern. Reeves, a swing and a miss. Bring the count to even. And the pitch. She spun that one and slowed it down about 15 miles an hour, and it dropped right in for strike two. One ball, two strikes, two outs, top of the fourth. Coach Z giving some final instruction to Reeves here as Cole Grove's trying to get out of this inning. She came in with two runners on and has shut the first two hitters down, which happened to be number two and three in Southern's lineup. The payoff pitch is a strikeout. Cole Grove, big inning on the mound, and now they're going to come up to bat when we get back here in the bottom of the fourth on WBON TV. Who makes the best meal in Richmond? Nuevo Vallarta. Friendly service, a place that's good for kids and good for groups. Head to Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. Nuevo Vallarta is known for warm hospitality, great prices, great food, and the best fajitas in town. Start with an appetizer, order a la carte, or choose from their huge menu of Mexican favorites for grown-ups and kids. Nuevo Vallarta on Big Hill Avenue in Richmond. If it won't go down. Call Mr. Rooter, the best in town. What do I do now? Call Mr. Rooter, the best plumber in town. Mr. Rooter is Central Kentucky's affordable and reliable plumber. Right now, get any drain in your home clean for only $89. Call 859-253-CLOG. That's 859-253-CLOG. So if you've got a problem that won't go down, call Mr. Rooter. He's the best plumber in town. He'll clean any drain in your home for only $89. Now I know who to call. Call Mr. Rooter. Bye-bye, poopy. And we're back here at Madison Central High School as the Indians lead the Madison Southern Eagles with a score of 10-2 to 2 in the bottom of the fourth. Kaylee Goss in here to uh, pitch her second inning of work and to try to shut down this high-powered central offense. John mentioned that they... Uh, Scored over 10 runs a game on average and already have 10 here after three. It's a pivotal inning for both teams here. If Central's able to get a few on the board, then a run rule 
at least comes in play and becomes part of the conversation. And if if you're central, you're really wanting to push for that because you can never let somebody hang around and feel safe about a lead because crazy things happen in the sport of softball. So Southern feels like they're entering an inning of desperation here defensively. Same defensive look we had in the third for them after they brought Goss into pitch. Last few innings, they've gotten a little bit of trouble loading the bases. That one is a high pop-up to center field, and she grabs it for the out. Nice play there by Ashlyn Eastup. Lydia Grinstead also in pursuit. One pitch, one out. Super efficient. One up, one down. That's what they were looking for. They try to give themselves some better position here, not trying to give up too many hits. Going to bring up Gilbo, the cleanup hitter. Nearly put one out of here earlier and had a great catch earlier, and she's ahead in a 1-0 count. Wings and misses that one. 1-1. One, one. Goss trying to be careful here. You don't want to serve Gilbo up a, a fast ball around her waist that could end up busting a window out in the parking lot. She's ahead 1-2. Want to give her something that she can't hit hard here. She fouls it off down the first baseline. Still with two strikes. One ball, two strikes, one out. Bottom of the fourth. Ball two. About halfway through this ball game, if... We stay in normal innings. Payoff pitch for Goss. Just a little low, and we're going to run it to full. So tough pitching around a hitter like Gilbo, who's one for one with a triple on the night. She, Because uh, even when you get ahead, you know you can't give her something that she's going to hit hard. You have to kind of pitch around her. That one's going to be fouled behind her. And sometimes if you miss your spot just a little bit, you find yourself getting behind in the count. Asking for a, another ball. Not sure if that one's uh, a little too scuffed up, a little too could have been the one not that... scuffed up enough. Could have been the one that was hit by Cress over here. Maybe it line has the drive. intention of my chair on <laughs> Line it. drive to third baseline over Beck's head. Ball four. And Gilbo is going to take first. All things considered, that might be a win for the Eagles, not letting her hit a grounder and make a triple. She, uh, she's got some wheels and can take bases just in a hurry. Coach Hall talking to the umpire, making some lineup changes here. This is where Gentry has been hitting. I think that's her that's up right there, so not sure what he was changing or looking to change, but one out for the Indians. Gentry's who we thought would be coming into pitch, but Colgrove came in and threw a great inning for the Indians, and here's the pitch. Ball one. 
And while there's no good part of this lineup to, to end up at, everybody can hit throughout this central lineup, this is certainly a dangerous portion here from Gilbo to Gentry. Hard hit ball by Gentry in the right center gap. Gilbo's going to take third. That's all she's going to get. Great throw in from Ashlyn Eastep to get to that and to hold Gentry to a single. Was able to move Gilbo over. Now we got a situation where runners on first and third. We'll see if... They leave Gentry at first or try to move her over into scoring position. She takes off. They're going to let her take second instead of risking a throw and the runner from third scoring. The pitch. Linton unless my eyes are failing me still batting in this spot one to one count here's the pitch get hard to short crest stops it gets the out at first run scores and Gentry moves over to third That's going to give us two outs, but they did get another run on the board. 11 to 2 is your ball game. Gentry now at third, two outs. Rare up to bat. Cress has played really well at shortstop. Had another put out there on the ground ball. Strike one to Guerrera. Ground ball back. That's the second Goss. line drive that pitcher has taken and made a throw at first. Great job for the third out. She only gives up one, which in that situation is a victory. And now Southern's going to come up to bat in the top of the fifth and try to do some damage. We'll take a one-minute break and be right back here on WBON TV. You've heard the name Chenault Vineyards, but what do you know about it? Chenault Vineyards is a place for the community to enjoy. Central Kentucky's premier event and wedding destination with five event venues, full service catering, over 13 varieties of wine, live music entertainment, seasonal food options, weekly themed Wednesday night out and girls night out, trivia, murder mystery date nights, and free yoga on the point with beautiful views. Everyone can find something to do at Chenault Vineyards. Want to know more? Follow them on Facebook and Instagram or plan your night out at Chenault vineyards.com it's that time of year when we are day and night driving with our kids all over your car never stops at amco transmissions we make sure to keep you rolling we have the latest technology certified technicians and longest warranty to keep your vehicles running strong we specialize in all foreign and domestic transmissions drive train or just general maintenance did you know at amco the average customer saves eighteen hundred dollars in comparison to the dealer and amco has a longer warranty come see us at amco transmission for the best service and the cheapest prices around double a mco back here heading into the top of the fifth at madison central high school central leads madison southern 11 to 2 cole grove in for her second inning of work on the mound as we are working to move all of our equipment out of rainy territory Madison Southern had some things going there in the bottom of the 
or in the top of the fourth, couldn't put a run on the board. Then they were able to hold Central to less than five runs for the first time since the opening inning. Old Grove starts the inning off with a strike. Chloe Risen up to bat for the Eagles. Risen is 0 for 1 on the evening. Pop fly to second. Can of corn there for Riley Sparks. First out of the inning for Madison Southern, who is running out of opportunities to chip into this lead. One out, Kaylee Goss up to bat for the Eagles. John, I can't tell you how impressive it was that we kept this operation going while moving <laughs> stuff out of the ring. I mean, you got to do what you got to do, right? I think Gage Hill just made the biggest play of the game. Thankfully, we've all worked together for a few years, and Gage is a great producer, great guy to work for. You know he can't hear you, right? Oh, well, then I take it all back. Yep. <laughs> Here's the pitch. He keeps the, the show running, rain or shine. The strike, 1-1 one, one count to Goss. And Colgrove getting some of her first varsity action. Fun that one a little too much, and it slipped. Ball two. Rain and audio and technical equipment does not mix, so uh, taking some precautions to move out of the rain here. Not started downpouring yet, but we did feel a little sprinkles. It was also my nickname in high school. <laughs> I was really about to say that about you. I'm glad that you uh, took the initiative there. 3-1 count to Goss. She's going to stay there for one more pitch. She had strike two. Full count, one out. Top five here on beautiful evening. Getting a little bit chilly. Maybe some rain on the way, but still a beautiful night nonetheless. She gets the strike out there. That's going to be two outs. And bring Grinstead up to the plate. Two outs, 11 to 2 ball game. We've known Lydia Grinstead at Southern for a long time, known her family for a long time. Her big brother, Sam, made his home on the football field. Also, uh, we were talking about him earlier, played some shot put for the Eagles down in Berea. He's now in college, known the Grinstead family for a long time. Lydia files that one off to fall to 0 1. She's 0 for 1 on the day. Here's the pitch. Left that one up just a little bit. 1 1 count to Grinstead. Holgrove really stepped into a tough situation there. They did have a lead. But she came in and saw uh, two runners on base with the meat of the lineup for Southern coming up and did not hesitate to come in and start throwing. And now she's one strike away from a one, two, three inning here in the fifth. Payoff pitch. Bounces in, 2-2 two, two count to Grinstead now. Pretty lively over there on the baseball diamond as well. Can't make out what that what is on that scoreboard. 
full count. Good take there by Grinstead. Action pitch here. Something's got to happen. The pop up. Holgrove makes the play, and that's it for Southern in the fifth. We'll take a one minute break and come back for the bottom right here on WBON TV. It's the common thread that ties us together making life better for everyone. At CVNB, that means better banking, better accounts and lending, better experiences, better schools and better communities. Better. It's what ties us together. CVNB. Bank better. marble and quartz for any surface. Make a lifetime commitment you won't regret. And we're back here heading into the bottom of the fifth. I think Gage uh, recognized that our table was about to collapse. Made a big save there. As Goss is back on the mound warming up, try to keep this Madison Central offense from blowing this even further wide open. Old Grove coming up to the plate here. For the Indians. Goss came in in relief. In the third. Has limited the damage, only gave up one run in the fourth. Pitch to Cole Grove, called a strike. Good start to the bottom of the fifth inning. Just off the outside corner there for ball one to even the count up. Fly ball to right field, it's foul. Good pursuit there by Reeves. Just a long strike. One, two count. The Cole Grove, so we're about at the bottom of the lineup for Madison Central. Goss looking over and making sure she gets the right pitch call. Coach is trying to get her and Keener on the same page. Grove steps back into the box. We got some more action over here in the bullpen. Ball two.
No outs, one, two count. Bottom of the fifth here in Richmond. Two, two. Goss wanted that one, called the ball. Here's the payoff pitch. Another foul ball. Really strong at bat here from Colgrove. John, I know you never played high school softball. That would be accurate. But you did play. Uh, I know you played football, and you've you've been in a lot of different competitions from the point of view of Southern here. They're down by a lot of runs, not an insurmountable amount, but it's almost there. What's it take for them to shift their mentality from try not to let this get worse to, hey, we can win. Let's make a move. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's the space between your ears, right? It's all in your head. You got you to gotta want it. Your whole team's got to buy in. You got to have the energy, and you can't let yourself get down mentally when you're down by this kind of a amount of runs. Old Grove uh, with a hit right back up the middle. I think that's when the the leadership of your older students and older players comes in, and you got to have a talk with your team. I mean, we've uh, we both played football. I know you played other sports too, but we've. We've both been in games where we've been down but not out, right? And uh, you got to have that mentality to find your way back in. First pitch to Stewart is a ball. Really good piece of hitting and a great at bat there by Cole Grove. The vast majority of the hits by Central have gone right back up the middle, exactly what you want to do. O2 count to Stewart. That's what's on the scoreboard. Trying to clarify there with the umpire is Coach Hall. Got a courtesy runner over on first. She bunts it. Good bunt down the third baseline. There's nobody at first and nobody at third. Grinstead had to run from left field to try to cover third. Yeah, there was a miscommunication and bunt coverage there. Both corners came up. And normally what you want to see there is, uh, I mean, there are a number of different ways you can handle it. The most common way is for second base to cover first and for shortstop to cover third. Obviously, Lydia Grinstead coming up from left field, but... I don't know if they were that surprised by the bunt. They were that worried about the runner stealing second or what, but they were really caught off guard and allowed both runners to advance now due to a, miscommunication. Yeah, runner on third in scoring position, runner on first. With the with, top of the lineup up. Yep, with zero outs. Southern has been here before. They've given up quite a bit with bases loaded. Parks one for three. Runner Runner's going to take second. Sorry, Jamie. No. Okay. Go one count to Parks. Already made a pitching change for Southern, so there's really not much you can do. At least there hasn't been another pitcher for Southern so far this year. Another bunt. Got an out at first there. Really good play by Goss coming off the mound and... That is going to bring another runner in, and a runner advances to third. And, John, that's going to do it. That's, that's the a ball game. Run rule. There you go. It's 10 after 5, and that's a victory for the Madison Central Indians here in the first game of district play. We talked about this a lot in basketball, John. The, the tournament's a random draw, but 
you do get uh, a lot of mental gain goes into these in-season district matchups. Last season, Central beat Southern really bad in their first meeting, a little closer in the second meeting, and it took them in extras to beat Southern in the district championship. So here we are with a run rule game, and it's really uh, – Probably motivating to Central. They move to 7-0. and Southern moves to 3-3 three and three on the year. Both teams will be back in action next week. We avoided the rain, but Madison Southern unable to put up runs. John, I don't think that they, they made a couple of errors, but I think the majority of what we see here is just from Madison Central hitting the ball. Yep, they have a that high powered offense we've talked about. They're gonna they're gonna go far this season. I'm excited to see what they do. I, I don't Madison Southern's definitely not out. They have a great ball team too. Uh, so uh, these these teams could meet again. Post game show brought to you by Chanel Vineyard. Chanel Vineyards become the go to destination for families and friends to enjoy fun and entertainment in a relaxing atmosphere. See why so many people spend their weekends at Chenault Vineyards at ChenaultVineyards.com. Linton started the game on the mound for Madison Central. They did not use Gentry, who's pitched the majority of the innings for them this season, and they were able to hold, hold Madison Southern to two runs. Bella Strunk pitched two and a half innings uh, before they brought in Kaylee Goss to finish the game. Um, a lot of a lot of hits over on Madison Southern side or Central side. Madison Southern had a lot of trouble getting the bats going. Performance of the game tonight. I think uh, I think you have to give it to Gilbo, who played third for Madison Central. She had a really good game offensively. Had a triple. Uh, Brooklyn Gilbo. She had a triple early in the game. Had some fantastic defensive plays tonight. The performance of the game goes to Brooklyn Gilbo. If you want your vehicle to perform like Brooklyn, take it to CT Diesel Performance located off of exit 97 in Richmond. Chris Thorne and his staff service all vehicles, big and small. Like them on Facebook to learn how can you, you can receive a free oil change from CT Diesel Performance. This has been an opening matchup of the season for Madison Southern and Madison Central as they're warming up here for their junior varsity game to take place next and we'll have more coverage this season of both of these teams as well as the other teams here in Madison County. Big thanks to uh, Jacob Beck working on camera, Gage Hill producing for John Bailey. I'm Jamie Boggs and this has been live local sports on WBON TV.